Hello friends, followers and fellow flight simmers. Welcome back to another video in Microsoft Flight Simulator. This time we are again with the magnificent, excellent, a lot of fun to fly, Just Flights 146 Professional. The reason I selected this aircraft is that I received a lot of questions uh, on my previous videos in the comments section and I wanted to, to record another video to address those questions and do another full flight tutorial. This is also to shave off some of the mistakes I have made and clarify some of the points. What we will do is we'll take a look at the cold and dark startup procedure. I'm not going to follow a checklist this time. Uh, we'll take a look at the autopilot functions and controls and how you can uh, use the autopilot in this aircraft. And we'll do a short cargo haul from Zurich, where we are in right now, to Geneva. Uh, this is a very short flight. Our cruising altitude will be 13,000 feet. And this flight will take only about 30 minutes tops. All right, let's jump into the cockpit and let's power this aircraft on. Welcome to the flight deck of 146. As you see, we are cold and dark and we will start with configuring a couple things. Looks like it's going to start raining very shortly. First things first, we are going to import our flight plan from Simbrief. We are from Zurich to Geneva, DHL 1484. And this is our routing information, which we will need very shortly. We'll also configure the aircraft, import the weights and balances, and put the ground power on. We can open the front door and the stairs, but to be open, able to open the cargo doors, we will need hydraulic power. So if you are not able to open this, that is most likely why, and we need to power the aircraft on to be able to do that. Let's take a look at the overhead. We'll go and do a basic pre-flight inspection. Um, fuel pumps are off, bus ties are off, NTI systems are off, cross feed is off, emergency lights are off, all the lights are actually off. Uh, bleed air, APU and engine bleeds are also off. Over here hydraulics are off and, um, and, and the avionics are off. We also check the wipers, they are already off, we know that. Um, if you leave them on that might damage the, the windows or windscreen. So the aircraft is pretty much ready to be powered on. Couple more things to check here is landing gear down, flaps and spoilers retracted and the throttles are at the idle cutoff position. Our transponder is also off and the weather radar is off as well. We can safely power the aircraft on. First thing, we'll turn the batteries to on. This will power some of the DC systems but we will obviously need AC power. We have external power available, so let's go ahead and turn it on. From here on, we'll do our flows from left to right and bottom to top and configure the aircraft for um, programming our flight plan, like initial uh, power on sequence. That's what we will go through. Center transfer tank goes to on or auto. This will transfer any fuel we have in the center tanks to the wing tanks. We can get some lighting to the glare shield. We'll go to the upper overhead. AC pump will turn it on. PTU will turn it on. Yo damper master 1 and 2. AP master, avionics master A and B turns on. Brake fans turns on to auto. Anti-skid and lift spoilers to yellow and green system. This is the left side. We can go to the tablet and open our side cargo door now because we have hydraulic power and they can start loading our aircraft. After the door is open, we don't need the AC pump and the PTU, so we can turn them off for now. We'll go to the center, galley power comes on, generators will stay off, we'll put the bus ties on and standby inverters to arm. Nothing to do here, we can monitor our batteries and we can monitor our external AC power for now. Uh, there's nothing at the upper overhead. 
we'll go through the middle lights are off uh, flight deck emergency lights will come on, fast and seat belts will come on, anti ice will stay off, uh, engine starter panel will remain as is, and APU we will start later. Over here we can run through the tests to make sure our APU is fire detection systems are working before we start the APU, and we'll do the engine fire tests. Uh, to make sure they are working as well. There are more like stall warning, stick shaker, uh, etc. You can do this if you want to, but 9 out of 10 times you won't be touching these buttons uh, if you are flying regularly. This part is done. Circuit breakers are not modeled in this aircraft, so we can quickly check, but they will not function or pop out in that regard. Over here, uh, we'll turn the window heat on. The rest stays off until we are ready to taxi. We'll turn on the ice detection switch by opening the guard. And we don't touch any other anti-ice systems. Over here, engine bleeds will remain off. APU, air and packs will remain off. Uh, air conditioning will remain off, but we will turn on some lights. Nav lights goes to high intensity. We'll turn the no smoking and cabin emergency uh, we turn the no smoking signs to auto and arm the cabin emergency lights. Um, it's sort of dark outside. It might be a good idea to turn on the wing and logo lights on as well due to weather conditions we have right now. So that's the overhead completed for initial startup. Down below, we will turn the flight directors to on. We'll turn our radios on and we'll arm our warning master warning system or turn on our master warning system we'll power on our tms trust management system we will durate a little bit there is no calculators i'm just doing guesswork here you can leave it as is if you want to and after doing that we will select the test it will do a test cycle this is again unnecessary, you can directly go and select the takeoff and set your bugs, but just showing you. Takeoff mode, and then we will click the placard to set our uh, bugs for our M1 and TGT, as well as our speed bugs. We can turn the TMS off for now, so that it doesn't interfere with our engine start. Over on the left side, on the pilot side, we can get some instrument lighting and we can test our oxygen to make sure it's working again completely unnecessary because there are no failures in this aircraft over on the pedestal side we'll put the weather radar to standby i am not sure if that's true to real life that's how i do it um, we'll turn the yaw damper system on and turn on the brake temperature display on as well we can also get some lights to do front and aft pedestal. Parking brake is set on the yellow system. And we have the brake accumulators here. Yellow system is pressurized, so the brakes will hold even if we remove the chocks. We can turn on our radios. These are the NAV radio, uh, COM radios, and we have two ADF radios here that we can turn on as well. Over on the co-pilot side, let me just get to the co-pilot side a little bit. We can get some lights. We can also check the cabin oxygen. We are a cargo aircraft, so I'm not sure if this is really necessary for hauling cargo, but we will do it anyway. And the co-pilot will check his oxygen system. And that's pretty much the pre-flight uh, we will be using a GPS flight plan, so we will turn these switches to our nav, so that the FMC will command the aircraft, not the nav radios. And that is all we need to do here before jumping into programming the FMC. Let's pull up the OFP. We are departing from via, via the WB1 Yankee departure. That is what we are going to do. And after that, we will be taking couple airways which we will program into the FMC. 
So position initialization is not functional. It is defaulted to the current GPS position. We'll jump directly to the flight plan page. Our departure is Lima Sierra Zulu Hotel. Our arrival or destination is Lima Sierra Golf Golf. After this, we'll go and select our departure. We are expecting, let's see here. It's not giving me the runway. I need to refer to Simbrief for the runway information. Let me just check that very quickly. We are expecting runway 28. So let's do that. And we are expecting one Yankee. We'll go to the flight plan page, next page here. And then next thing is an airway. Airways uh, go to the right side of the FMC. And that airway will take us to Rodos or Rotos, however it's pronounced. And then from there, we will take Zulu 669er airway until Almas. That is programmed now. And from here, it's our arrival, which we can pre-select. And we are not using ATC. Uh, you might get different arrival from ATC if the weather changes, but for us, it's not going to change. We are expecting ILS 22 via the Ulmes 1 Romeo arrival with SPR transition. All good now. We can execute this and go to the legs page and check for any discontinuities that we might have to clear those up. We saw one more here. We can also hit delete and delete that and execute. And that is all the discontinuous discontinuities um, cleared up. Very easy to program FMC. There is no performance calculation. There is no uh, weather calculation or anything. There is no weights and balances entries. So it's really easy to calculate. We are departing from runway 22. The heading is 220, I believe. So we can set our heading bug to 22 to make sure we are on the correct runway. That's now set. And we will need the meta information for Q and H. Uh, if you are in a rush and do not want to listen to METAR, you can simply press the B key. It will set the barometric pressure for you. That's what I did here. And we can uh, then think about pushback and starting our engines. To do that, we will need the APU on. So let's start our APU. Left inner pump comes on as well. APU can start with suction power. It can suck the fuel from the tank. Let me turn it off and show you what, what happens here. It will start, uh, but when it starts, you will see low fuel pressure warning for the APU here at the APU panel. Wait a little bit and you will see that uh, coming on. You can also check the APU generator here. APU generator is available and online but as you see APU fuel low pressure when I turn the left inner pump that light extinguishes and that's the reason we turn the left inner pump because that's where APU gets its fuel so now APU is running we can turn the APU generator on and now we see the APU generator online and providing AC power to the aircraft we can also turn the APU air and PEX and cabin air on PEX probably would be unnecessary for a cargo aircraft, but, well. Now we can remove the ground power. We don't need it. We can close the doors, but again, to close the doors, we will need hydraulic power. So momentarily, we will turn the AC pump and PTU on. You might not need PTU. Probably you will not need it. AC pump should be enough to close the doors. We'll retract the stairs. We'll close our side cargo door. And we can take a look. It's closing now. Stairs are now almost in place. They are now. We can close the door and we can remove the chucks. So we are pretty much we are pretty much ready for 
pushback and engine start. We are not using ATC, so therefore I will start the engines on the stand and then we will carry out the taxi uh, from there. To start the engines, first things first, we will turn the beacon light on. That's right here. It's assigned to a button on my controller, so that's what I use to turn it on. Now we have the beacon on. We'll go to the lower panel. We'll turn the start master to on. We will turn off the packs. We will need that bleed air for the engine start. And we assume that we have clearance to start our engines. We'll select engine number four first and click engine start. So now we are monitoring. I'm going to keep this wheel. We are monitoring our N1. When it reaches and passes 20, percent we will introduce fuel by pulling the, fuel, the throttle lever of engine number four from idle cutoff to idle like that that will provide fuel to the aircraft and one thing i forgot we turn all the fuel pumps on all right that should now start the engine while the engine is starting we can monitor the starter operating button here. We can also monitor the gauges. At about 40% and one and two, we should see oil pressure and oil temperature increasing. That's a sign of a good engine start. And when this starter engaged light extinguishes, you can switch to the next engine and start the next engine in line. We can look a little bit closer and M1 rotation. We have M1 rotation waiting for 20% or more. And then we will introduce fuel. That's 20%. Fuel is now on. And then we should see ignition and the TGT will start rising. That's there. And then N2 will start climbing. And at 40%, we should see oil pressure and oil temperature or oil pressure moving and oil temperature is already in the green. Let's wait for 40% and as we see oil pressure is increasing. Starter is disengaged, we can go and start engine number 2 and follow the same thing. Okay, I'm waiting for 20%. That is 20, fuel is on. Waiting for ignition now. Now we have ignition. Now waiting for N2 and oil pressure. N2 is increasing and we can check the starter. It's still engaged. Passing 40%. Oil pressure is seen and we can start engine number one. Again, one more time, same thing, and we will do the after engine start checks. Uh, as I said, I'm not using any checklists. Uh, all of this is from memory. I might be skipping some, but this is not true to real life procedure. So bear with me for a second. 25% fuel is on, waiting for ignition. We have ignition and then N2 waiting for oil pressure. We also see the fuel flow down below here. We can reset by pushing these buttons. Uh, that will reset the fuel used, but it's already zero, so no need to worry about it. We don't have any fuel in the center tanks. It might be a good idea to turn center tank transfer from auto to off. But it looks like we have good engine start and we will not need this, so we will shut it for now. And starter is already disengaged, so we can turn this off and we can turn start master switch to off. So now we have the after start flows. First thing, we'll go to the upper overhead on the left, turn the engine hydraulic pumps on, turn off the AC pump and DC pump. PT will stay on for now. Lower overhead, we'll turn the engine generators on. This will provide power to the aircraft. And over on this side, you can turn the anti-ice on starting the engines. That's, that's what the manual says, but I always forget about this just letting you know anti-ice 
needs to be turned on to protect the engines from ice uh, when you are starting in cold weather. So APU will stay on until we take off because uh, we don't want the bleed air affecting engine performance from the engines. We will use APU air to supply the packs and cabin with uh, air conditioning and we will turn off APU when we are above the ground at a safe altitude. So that's pretty much what we need to do after start except we'll set our flaps to flaps 18. That's flaps 18 selected. We'll make sure our trim is in the takeoff position in the green band over here. Um, we'll set our transponder code and put the transponder on TA for now. We are about to taxi. You can do this later on, I'm just doing it a little bit early. And we don't touch the red weather radar yet and we are pretty much ready to leave the gate. Chocks are removed, doors are closed and aircraft is ready to taxi. Ice protection, we will turn that on when we start taxiing. This is the pedo heat and other ice protection systems on the, in the aircraft. Uh, you can turn them on. This is a two-way switch, so you need to click twice for the vanes and pedo heaters, but they are now on. Our pressurization system is also on auto mode. And that is pretty much it. You can play with the flight deck and cabin fans if you want to. Temperature is set to auto, so we will leave it as is for now. Right, we are ready to leave the gate, but let's do a couple more things before we do that. We'll climb directly to our cruising altitude, so we will set this over here on the autopilot panel. Arm the altitude, arm the LNAV and vertical speed modes. You can also climb with indicated airspeed as well. Uh, it will take the indicated airspeed at the time and keep climbing. We will discuss more about this, but before we leave the gate, I'd like to talk about the sync mode of the autopilot. Let me get closer to the FMA here. So if I press the button I assigned for the sync mode, you will see sync lighting up here. And if I press it again, it will go off. What this does is you select a flight attitude, pitch up, pitch down by activating sync and then controlling the aircraft to pitch up, down, whatever vertical speed you desire and then press it again and the autopilot will follow that vertical speed and maintain that. Same is true for indicated airspeed. When you set your indicated airspeed, uh, press the sync button and press again. It will maintain that speed until you command it to do, do something different. That's how the autopilot pretty much works. The modes are pretty much same. Glide slope, localizer, back course localizer, altitude capture, vertical speed, Mach capture if you are above 29,000 feet. VNAV doesn't work in this aircraft so that has no use for us and heading mode. We'll set the runway heading. To do that we will pull the chart Sometimes it's a little bit slow. There we go. We'll pull the taxi chart. We will need it for our taxi routing anyway. And we'll zoom a little bit. We are over here and runway 28. Our departure runway is over on the other side of the airport. So which means we are going to take Echo and then Foxtrot Juliet Kilo Alpha Alpha 1 and then into the runway. So that's the taxi routing we have and the runway heading is 274 as you see on the chart. We will set the heading bug to 274 roughly. That's 271234. That should be it. And we are pretty much ready to leave the gate. So transponder is at TA. We already did that. Trim is at takeoff position. Flaps. I forgot to do that. I'm recording this again. Uh, the sim crashed, so there are some things that I forgot to do to make it look like the same as the previous one. But and 
that's about it. Um, we'll check the flight recorder off, parking brake on, brake fans on. That's okay. Uh, nothing to worry there. Uh, runway heading is set and yeah there is nothing else we need to do other than turning on our taxi lights the down position of the landing light switches is the taxi light up position is landing lights we can get some lights to the overhead panel too that should do it the weather is kind of dark our taxi lights are on disengage the parking brake and off we go what we will do is we'll turn right to taxiway echo while we are doing this we started to move we'll do a takeoff config check by pressing that button if you don't hear a horn that means our takeoff is configured flight controls full forward full back full left full right they are free and working and right rather left rather as well and we are ready to we are rolling kind of slow let me just add a little bit more power that will hopefully help us move a little bit faster there we go we started to pick up some speed it looks like it started raining too we might need anti-ice during takeoff for the engines but we will turn into the taxiway echo here and then follow echo all the way to the end to turn to foxtrot and then follow along all right this is this is gonna take a little bit of time so you know where i'm going we have discussed the taxi routing i'm gonna cut the video here and bring you guys back when we are close to the runway see you in a little bit we are approaching runway 28. This is our turn into the runway. We will hold short a little bit to do a final check and we will line up and do our takeoff roll. We are coming up to the hold short point. We will wait here momentarily and what we will do is do a final configuration check transponder goes to TARA radios are on lights are as required we'll turn the TMS to on and set it for takeoff uh, altitude is selected autopilot is configured radios are set which we are not using today cockpit lighting is set it's raining so we are probably going to need engine anti-ice for takeoff uh, APU air will stay on. I'm not sure if I told about this uh, until we are up in the air because we don't want to stress the engines with engine bleeds. Continuous ignition comes on and we will turn on our landing lights and our strobe lights. Strobes are on at the overhead panel over here. We'll turn them on and then landing lights we will turn them on and the runway exit lights as well. So we are ready to enter the runway. Let's get moving. Rain in Microsoft Flight Simulator is like glue, so it takes more power to get the aircraft moving. This is a little bit unrealistic, unfortunately, but that's the only way to move. But looks like we are taking under heavy, taking off under heavy rain, and I'm not sure if 13,000 feet will be enough to clear the clouds. All right. We are coming up and let's turn on the head tracking for a moment that is the runway we are going to line up here all right cut the power there are some warnings I'm not sure what's going on there but I will check them before takeoff let's line up first and how I line up is I use this notch on the wiper to line the aircraft up not sure if we have to turn the 
I put this on, but let me just stop the head tracking. Um, okay, anti ice is on, pedo heat is on, lights are on, generators online, everything is looking good. The last thing is it's saying ice detected, ice, ice protection. Ice protection should be on, but well, let's just turn on means wink ice protection too. That's probably what the aircraft is asking us to do. And then we'll turn the weather radar to on, even if it's not working. And we are ready to go. What we will do, we'll hold the brakes, increase the throttles to 50% N1, let the engine stabilize, release the brakes yes, and apply yes. power. That should do it. We maintain the center line. We have a little bit of crosswind. Speed alive, both sides. I need to apply some right rudder to keep her on the Eight center line. Eight knots. Up to V1. V1. Rotate. Rotate. Let's lift her gently. V2. Pitch up to 10 degrees. Positive and to climb gear. gear is coming up. And we are going to follow our flight director and our uh, HSI and maintain the vertical speed. Waiting for clean flap speed, so we are going to command the aircraft. I'm also trying to trim at the same time. We are off to the left a little bit. Let's get back on flight plan track. We are climbing nicely and accelerating nicely. So the trim is still not where I want it to be. I'm trimming up a little bit to maintain the vertical speed. And we will command the other car pilot when we are at a safe altitude. Coming up to clean flap speed. Looks like trim is now set. VFTO, safe height speed. Select to flaps. Flaps are now coming in. And now we are at a safe altitude. We can turn the autopilot on. And it is going to maintain the vertical speed. We will talk about the indicated airspeed later. But now we will climb at this vertical speed and the autopilot will command the aircraft. So we can do the after takeoff checks and clear everything up. Speed brakes in, flaps are retracted, parking brake is off, autopilot on, transponder TARA. So now we don't we can turn on the engine bleeds. We can turn off the APU air and we can turn off the APU generator and finally turn off the APU. And that is pretty much the after takeoff checks. We will keep the anti-ice systems on because it's raining right now. But if we pull the departure chart, you will see our position and where we are at. It follows the plan very nicely. There we go. We need to be above 5,000 feet, which we already passed 5,000. And those warnings you heard were for APU turning off or spooling down. We passed 6000, that's the transition altitude. Let's set the QNH to standard and keep climbing and wait for 10,000 to clean up the aircraft. The other thing, TMS is still at takeoff, we can select the TGT mode now or you can select sync, either one works. Uh, I like to use sync during climb and TGT on so that the engines are synced to engine number one and the aircraft controls the speed. We are looking good, we are above the clouds. Uh, we are probably going to turn off the NTI systems when we reach cruise but I'm gonna keep them on for now for extra precaution. Come back on the throttles a little bit.
coming up to 10,000 very shortly. It's there. We are going to turn off our landing lights when we pass 10,000. There it is. Landing lights and runway turn off or exit lights are coming off. We can turn off the seatbelt signs too. And we will keep climbing. Speed is looking good. We are climbing very nicely. So no worries there. You can adjust the speed if you want to. When we reach to cruise level, I will talk about the button assignments for the sync mode and we'll take a look at those when we reach to the cruise level. Just a little bit more, 1000 to go. That's the altitude warning you are hearing. Oh, we have traffic. That's what, why we are getting this warning. Right, we are almost at our cruise level. I'm still... Okay, we cleared the tra traffic. Which is nice. Vertical speed is coming down. We need to adjust the throttles for a proper cruise speed and try not to overspeed the aircraft. Right now I'm gonna stick to sure why it keeps accelerating okay this looks okay we are set up for TGT and if the speed increases or creeps up we can monitor that and adjust accordingly all right looks like we are set up for cruise and we will maintain this attitude watching the speed it's creeping up slowly looks like but for now we are fine. The button assignments what I was talking about for the sync mode of the autopilot. If you go to your controller options and find your controller of choice, I'm using my joystick for sync and I'm using the trigger button at the front. The first one is toggle afterburner. That controls the sync mode where you press once to sync and then press again to accept your current flight attitude or current pitch. The other option is called set VLT. If you assign a button to this, you have to press and hold that button you assigned and then when you release it, it will sync. So the difference between toggle afterburners and set ELT is that toggle after burners you will just press once and then sync press again to accept the sync set ELT you press and hold until you are happy and then release it to accept the sync these are the two assignments I am personally using the afterburner one because it makes it easier for me to control the aircraft but now we are cruising we need to discuss the landing and descent so for that we'll go to the index and progress page we are 97 miles away from our destination. If we pull the chart for Geneva, our arrival chart is this one, almost one Romeo, and looks like that's this middle one. And we don't have any restrictions. We are below 150, and there is only speed restriction I see on the almost one Papa arrival. We'll pull the approach for ILS runway 22 and we'll go over this localizer frequency final approach course so we can set the localizer frequency 
that is 108.7 that's going to be on the standby and we have a VOR here 113.9er we'll use the second radio for that and that should pick up we have 72 miles to that VOR station and there is another one over here 115.75 we will use that for a secondary uh, measure to have that on our displays to measure the distance to the airport so the plan in the descent we are at 13,000 we need to descend down to 4,000 so that's 9,000 difference times that by 3 that's 27 add 10 mile buffer into that that's 37 miles roughly about 37 40 miles to the airport we are going to start our descent and you can see your distance to the airport on the progress page we have 87 miles so we have quite a bit uh, before we can descend and we will talk about that when we get there okay the speed is creeping up again I'm gonna cut the throttles a little bit more I'm gonna see what's going on with the okay we are going to use just the sync mode I think the TGT is giving me trouble so I'm gonna use the sync mode and maintain synced engines and not worry about the TGT I'll probably go up to 80% and one we are slowing down and you have to keep an eye on your speed with, without having a full authority auto trust system you have to passing through the clouds but we are engine anti-ice is on other anti-ice systems are on what's the outside air temperature that's what I'm trying to figure out here I think it's over here at the overhead panel those are the dark temperatures we will leave it alone I can't remember where was the outside air temperature display on in this cockpit I'm just trying to decide whether I will need the NTI systems or not because we are passing through the clouds and I don't know what it looks like outside when it comes to temperature anyway we will use this we will add a little bit of little bit more thrust okay, it looks like we started accelerating I'm gonna come back to 81 ish and we leave it there and I will bring you guys back when we are ready to descend see you in a little bit welcome back friends we have 50 miles to the your airport and we can start thinking about our descent what we need to do is first we are going to set the altitude to 4000 and arm it we are going to take a look at the distance 47 so say in seven miles we are going to start descending um, in the meantime we can turn the seatbelt signs on and we can come back on the throttles to slow down because we need to drop below 250 knots below 10,000 when we are on the descent checking the distance five more miles that will help us slow down and this aircraft is designed to use that huge clamshell speed brake during descent to control the speed so do not hesitate to use that all right that's our approach i'm gonna keep this here uh, off screen what i did is i set the final approach course here and i'm gonna set the uh, radio because we started picking up the other dme so 108.7 and because all I need is DME I can put this to DME hold hold light will turn on and even if I switch the frequencies I will still keep that DME information here which is quite handy so I know the distance we are almost there 40 miles to the airport 
we are going to command the TMS to descend press the sync button the light will come on we will pitch the nose down to a vertical speed of 1700 feet like that just a little bit more than that and then we will accept the sync and then we will adjust the throttles accordingly so that we don't speed up now we are descending and let's select the vertical speed mode I forgot to do that let's do this again sync it should stay at that vertical speed and descend down I'm gonna cut the throttles a little bit more to drop below 250 knots slow down and we are descending nicely so almost back to idle we need to slow down below 250 and as I said do not hesitate to use that big speed brake to slow yourself down that speed brake is very effective to slow the aircraft down to your desired speed if you are going faster on the oil we are down to 250 indicated airspeed we'll cut the throttles a little bit more that should get us or keep us around 250 knots the weather looks interesting so we'll see how the landing will look like but well, it's going to be a challenging landing it started raining again uh, we'll take a look at those so while we are descending I'm gonna cut the video here and bring you guys back when we are ready to execute our approach see you in a little bit welcome back friends we are very close to the airport as you see we are on approach path i'm gonna cut the throttles back use the speed brake to slow us down because we need to get down to the flap speed to start extending our flaps and what i also need to do is sync our heading bug to our current heading because we might have to momentarily switch to heading mode as we started to pick up the ILS signal uh, I wanna execute or arm the localizer and glide slope uh, when we get close to 4000 we are slowing down the throttles are at idle position and we are coming up to our final fix which is this guy over here we should be at 4000 before that we are descending nicely and the speed should come down when we start leveling off at our altitude to capture the glide slope 1000 to go frequencies are set final approach course is set we will worry about the flaps later on uh, seat belt signs are on we'll turn on the continuous ignition because we are about to land and that's the altitude call and we are decelerating nicely and we should be okay in terms of speed all right we started pitching up that will help us lead the speed off and we need to control the throttles as well when we are uh, doing this all right coming to the clean flap speed now almost at 4000 what we will do is we will switch to heading mode switch to radio mode to nav again and Speed we will switch to localizer flaps 18, Flaps localizer 18. and localizer is captured speed is now good to introduce flaps we are slowing more so i'm gonna add some throttle we don't want to speed we don't want the speed to drop too fast something around 60% M1 is what I'm looking for here to maintain the speed we are still slowing down I'm gonna go one more level of flaps to 24 and I will set my landing uh, speed bugs for landings with flap 33 my speed bugs are set now and we need a little bit more throttle that looks good 
We can now arm the glide slope. We are almost at our final fix. We are at 10 miles to the airport. At about 8 miles we will drop the landing gear. Speed is still slowing down. So let's go a little bit more throttle or let's add a little bit more throttle and maintain the speed. There we go. That is good enough. We can go flaps 30 now. Airport is in sight. Landing gear is now coming down. And then we will bring the speed brakes in. Add more throttle because we are about to drop the speed too much and the autopilot will disconnect if that happens. Alright. And final stage of flaps. Cut the throttles back. We don't want to speed too much. Slope White slope is now captured, we should start the aircraft. The Descending, we are established on the ILS. Missed approach altitude is 7000. We started descending, speed is creeping down again. Hard to control everything. There we go. That's what I want to see. Alright, we will maintain this throttle setting set our missed approach altitude to 7000 and everything should be configured now for our arrival 2500 okay speed is looking good i'm gonna slightly adjust the throttles to cut it a little bit more and try to get down to our final approach speed We'll see if we will start slowing down. You should see the aircraft slowing down a little bit. And you can always use the speed brakes if you want to. To slow yourself down to the approach speed. But everything is looking fine. We'll set our decision height to 200. That's the last thing we need to do. The rest is monitoring the aircraft and getting on the, uh, on the ground. Looks like we are slowing now. Controlling the throttles, cutting as necessary to maintain the glide slope and the approach speed. But all is looking good. I see two whites, two reds on the puppy lights. There's an aircraft in front of us. We are seeing on the TCAS display too. Coming down to 2600, the radio altitude started counting too. Everything is looking nice for our landing. We'll see if the landing will look okay. We lost one of the puppies, two white, one white, three reds. We will add some throttle to maintain the speed so that the aircraft doesn't need to pitch down a lot. And we should be fine now. Right, two whites again. It's all about controlling your throttles during approach. And that will get you where you need to be. 1000 1, checked. I am getting ready to disconnect the autopilot. Waiting just a little bit more. Watching the speed. Now this time we are a little bit high. Disconnect the autopilot. Two reds, two whites, controlling the aircraft, maintaining the center line as much as I can. Controlling the pitch to stay on the puppies. And right now what I'm doing is I'm focusing on the puppy lights to control the aircraft. And the descent. 500 is checked. We are still a little bit high. We need to pitch down a little bit more. Get back to the center line. That's what we want. Just a little bit more. Okay, 100. Checked. Pitch up a little bit, Minimums. get back on profile, Minimums. continue, alright we are on profile again, coming down nicely, maintaining the center line and getting ready to cut the throttles. 
the throttles and let her drop off the sky. Ground idle. Okay, we are on the ground. We are going to extend the speed brake. And we are going to start braking. Nose will come down and we will maintain the center line. Not too bad landing. Break more. 60 knots. We probably cannot take this exit. We are going to take the other one. I'm not sure what this aircraft is doing here. We'll bring the speed brakes in. We'll bring the flaps in. And we will exit the runway from the next exit. Alright. Still trying to. Uh, improve my landings in this aircraft, a little bit of more braking here and we will take this high speed exit into the parking area. I'm not sure which part is the cargo base but we will find the parking spot somewhere here. Uh, let's stop here momentarily to configure the aircraft for taxiing again. And this is where I missed the ATC to get proper instructions for taxiing transponder that goes back to TA landing lights will come on taxi lights will come off taxi light will come on strobes will come off and that is pretty much it speed brakes and flaps are already retracted and configured we don't need the DME hold anymore yeah. we'll find ourselves a parking spot Maybe somewhere here looks like a cargo terminal or maybe over here, I don't know. We'll go we'll go over there, somewhere over there, and find the parking spot. But I don't know exactly which side of the airport is the parking location for cargo. And we can always check the taxi chart, which I gen genuinely forget all the time. But let's bring this up and see if it will help us find the parking location. Okay, we are here. Control tower, north apron. That might be the cargo bay, but I'm not going to stress about it. We will find something over here at the south apron next to that aircraft. Okay, let's get moving. Follow this taxi way and maybe find a spot over here to park the aircraft. I need to get better at looking at the parking locations before I depart so that I know where to go when I land. Uh, am I missing the taxiway? Looks like I am. Let's turn. There's no taxiway after this. So let's keep on this one here. look to our left and find a parking spot maybe after this aircraft we will just roll into the next stand which is that one over there Up the aircraft here yeah 84 okay we will park here Line the aircraft. Always hard to align this aircraft. I'm trying to use my twist axis on my side stick to control the nose wheel instead of using my rudder pedals, and it becomes a little bit more challenging because I'm not used to it a lot. But looks like we are looking good now. We can get into a higher wheel and move until our nose wheel stops at the yellow line. And to gauge it, I think we need to move a little bit more forward and stop somewhere here. Let's see if I did a good job. Yep, looks like it. What we will do is we'll set the parking brake to... Or, yep, the parking brake is set. Taxi lights are coming off. Luckily, we didn't have anybody to blind over here. 
Taxi lights are off. We'll start. We should have started the APU. But we'll start it now. It's not gonna take too long. And then we will shut down our engines. Uh, pedo heat. All this window heat. Everything can come on. Continuous ignition can come off. Not on, I'm sorry. I will keep the packs on for now. Over here. No smoking lights. We will turn them off. These lights are already off. Strobe is off. Beacon will come off when we shut the engines down. And APU should be ready. Yep, it is. APU gen is now online. And we can shut the engines down one by one. Alright. Four, three, two, one. Light directors can come off now. Let's clear these warnings. Uh, beacon light can come off, which I did on my controller. We'll turn off the um, fuel pumps except the left inner. We'll go to the. We'll turn off the generators and reset them if we want to. Um, nothing to worry over here. Ice detection system can be turned off. It's hard to do this from pilot side, to be honest. There we go. And then we can turn off the engine hydraulic pumps. Uh, we can keep the AC, AC pump on for now because we are going to open the cargo hold. That is done. Where the radar goes back to off position, it should have been all switch to standby prior to taxiing to the gate transponder can come back to standby we will squawk 2000 lights will come off like the overhead panel as well go to the tablet and put the chocks in place request the ground power open the forward door and open the cargo door right we have ground power available let's turn it on All right we have ground power now we can turn off the packs we can turn off the apu we are on ground power now apu generator is now off and that's about it. Uh, we can turn off the hydraulic pumps and the avionics. Those are off now. We can turn off the master warning system now. TMS is already turned off after the avionics switch. And We'll turn off the ADF radios, not the parking brake, please. Radios off. We'll turn the radios off. The rest is okay. We can keep this on if we need to do a turnaround. And the rest of the shutdown, if we are not flying again from here, is to turn everything back to where they were at the beginning of the flight uh, which is okay because we are going to stay here so let's go over that as well uh, brake fans they will stay at auto anti-skid lift spoilers they are off cabin emergency lights are off seatbelt sign is off we already took care of this part Past ties can come off and nav lights will come off when we shut the power or we are ready to do that cabin fan can come off everything over here looks good and we are ready to cut the power so nav lights are coming off we'll cut the external power and finally we turn the batteries to off Alright friends, there you go, we are now 
parked at Geneva and finished our flight from Zurich in the, sp in the speed of full 146 professional. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, consider giving a like. If you stumbled upon this video and not a channel subscriber, please hit that subscribe button, turn on the bell to get notified for future videos. That helps a lot for these videos to reach other flight sim enthusiasts and helps the channel tremendously. Thanks for being here with me today. Thanks for flying along and I will be seeing you in the next video.